Great. Thanks, Gary. I appreciate it. So first of all, I just want to thank everybody for being here today, uh, taking time out of your day to, you know, listen to some ESPOMA fun facts. So um, again, thank you. So we'll get started. So the first, um, I just, this is just kind of overview. Nobody has to remember this or look at it, but really just going to go through some what's going on right now. Prada, um, I thought that was most important. I know a lot of you guys have made your purchasing decisions already. But, but again, you know, if you're thinking about uh, bringing in a SPOMA, you have a SPOMA and you just want a little bit more information on how to sell it uh, and what it's all about. So, well, with that, um, I wanted to go over just a few things. I won't spend a ton of time um, and I'm just gonna breeze through these slides. Um, a little bit about us. Um, we've been around since 1929. Um, you're going to find some changes. We've just put the new CDFA logo on all of our new bags. You should be able to see them. We had it previously, but again, wasn't on the bags until we started rolling into our new bags. We're 100% solar powered. Um, I think that this is, this is important because really it shows that we're really committed into making sure that we walk the talk, um, making sure that we're doing what's best for the planet. We produce organic fertilizer, so that's important to us. So we're 100% powered by solar. Um, we rolled over in 2010 and haven't bought electricity since. So pretty cool. Um, we went to a bio preferred packaging. We started rolling that out in uh, 19 as a test. And then in 20, we went to 100% of all of our packaging, which again, just a way to start um, doing better by our planet. So 25% of our packaging is made from plant-based resins. Uh, it's part of the USDA's BioPreferred Packaging Program, which we're the only fertilizer company that's um, participating or part of this. So again, those are, uh, it's still plastic, but again, made from a renewable resource, which is a sugar cane. So, um, we're a zero waste manufacturing facility. Um, we do all kinds of other sustainability efforts. So again, if you want to know about those, please let me know. So, all right. So we're going to roll it right into the indoor fertilizers. So this, um, interestingly enough, is just kind of what's going on oh, about uh, fertilizing, or excuse me, um, indoor plants. So when my daughter came to me and said, mom, you know, would you help me be a plant parent? I thought, oh my gosh, this is crazy. So um, we're still seeing it, it's still going strong in our garden centers. And we have quite a few products that we manufacture that can kind of help you in that department. So number one, I wanted to cover, which is our indoor uh, fertilizer. So a lot of you, you know, carry some indoor fertilizers. What are the differences when it comes, you know, when you're looking at the blue juice, when you're looking at a white other brand packaging, all those things. The most important thing about our indoor fertilizers are number one, they're 100% they're organic. So when we're fertilizing our house plants or containers or things like that, those items are in a closed container, you know, they're, they're absorbing all the after effects um, if you're using a synthetic fertilizer. So they're, they're getting the, the leftover salts, um, the leftover um, nutrients that the plant is not going to use, and that's all stored down by the roots. And that's where we end up with burning and uh, problems with our soil dying, where we have to repot more often. Again, you know, it can add up to a lot of issues when people come, you know, to into your garden center and say, hey, listen, I've got these, this, what's going on with my indoor plant? What's going on with my, you know, containers? So you look at the 222 and think, oh, hey, you know, it's an all-purpose fertilizer. But really what I wanted to show you guys and made it really big on here, is that 125 million CFU. So just a little perspective, most granulated fertilizers that you're putting out, um, for instance, in a spomatone, it has 6 million CFU. This is 125 million CFU. 
So when I'm explaining this product, I think, yes, the 222, fantastic. Getting a great all around fertilizer, but you're really rebuilding your soil. You know, you're making that soil a re, you know, re, you're rejuging it, as I say. Um, people make fun of it, but you're really bringing that soil back to life after you washed out all the nutrients over time. So, you know, that's the awesome thing about our indoor fertilizers. You know, the, the orchid and the African violet have about 33 million CFUs in it. So again, these are all just tools to rebuild the soil and give the soil back what it needs to then feed and make your plant successful. So any of you little bacteria people out there, if you kind of look down and you look at this, this bacteria, which is trichoderma, which is just amazing. Um, it, it eats bad bacteria. Um, it's an expensive bacteria to put in, but we put it in. So again, you're getting all this bacillus that's building your soil that again, turned around and feeds your plant, but you're also getting trichoderma in here which helps to defeat bad bacteria in your pot. So cases of overwatering or again, buildup of other um, issues that you might have in your soil. So you might see something really interesting. So one of the things I wanted to point out is we have changed our cap. So that's, you're gonna start seeing that as it comes into your garden centers. So it used to have an easy dose cap on it. And, you know, we were importing that cap and so what we're doing now is we've gone to something that is made here in the United States. Um, it, it's like a laundry cap. It doesn't need a lot of explanation like the easy dose did. So again, it is getting something that's a little bit um, e easier consumer friendly to use. Uh, but again, this is a concentrate. So um, this will do about 14 quarts of water uh, when, you know, when you start fertilizing. So again, this is an amazing product. So if you're Hopefully, you know, all of you have either used it or um, had customers that love it. But again, this is a, this is an amazing product and, and it's, it's, it's worth a try. So um, I, I just threw this in. Um, our guy that does our bacteria, uh, he did, uh, this is from 2018. So he essentially fed um, two of the same coleus throughout the, um, a certain time frame, and and this was re this is really the difference in, in the same plant. Uh, so you can tell the difference in the coloration, the difference in the growth. Um, so this is just your comparison via a synthetic, you know, miracle grow product. Looking at it through, um, you know, this this film indoor. I always love these type of photos because it really just shows the the um, the difference between, you know feeding your soil and actually trying to feed the plant. So, um, Esponda soil mixes. So, oh, I have a typo. Sweet, I just saw that. <laughs> so anyway, um, this is, you know, again, we're doing something just a little different. Um, our soil mixes, we all add mycotone to it. Um, mycotone is our mix of endo and ecto mycorrhizae. So all of our indoor soils, with the exclusion of, you know, orchid mix, which is not a soil, um, you are getting a, um, you know, blend of mycorrhiza in each soil bag. Uh, we are also putting a wetting agent, which is a yucca extract, uh, alfalfa meal, kelp meal, feather meal, earthworm castings is going into all of them, pure light limestone to adjust pH, and also a resealable package. So I get a lot of feedback. Um, we still make a four quart size uh, in a lot of these and then an eight quart bag as well. So again, you know, a lot of people are looking at the four quart. It's really a convenient size. So many people love a small bag of African violet or a small bag of orchid. Uh, we have also added a, a bonsai mix. So again, those are items most people only are gonna have a couple of, um, so they prefer a smaller bag. Um, when you get more urban, a lot of people are on foot, a lot of people are on bike, you know, depending on where you're in. And again, this is just gives you another option of a small bag. Um, 
So don't just look at the small bag and think, oh heck, you know, people aren't going to take a smaller bag because it's a little bit more money. Um, like I said, th this size sells wonderfully. And I, I'm sure, like I said, give it a try. You can talk to other people that are carrying it in their stores. Um, so again, kind of the just an overview of what we're doing in uh, the Espoma soil mixes. The one I really wanted to point out um, is our seed starting mix. And again, this is what's happening right now. Um, when I'm talking to garden stores, when I'm out in garden stores, they're telling me, you know, we can't keep seeds in stock. Uh, you know, the seed, the seed racks are empty. We keep, you know, blowing through it. So again, we're making a premium organic seed starter. Um, we produce it in eight quart and 16 quart. And I kind of blew up the, the bag, the back of the bag, because we're the only, again, we're the only one that does this. So we put endo and ectomycorrhizae in our seed start. And I can't tell you how many stores I walk into and, and you'll see a bag of seed start that number one isn't organic. Um, so these people with that are purchasing organic seed then don't have an option to then plant with organic seed starter. So, you know, give them an, give them that option. They're buying organic seed, give them an or organic seed start. Secondly, if they do have, if you do have an organic seed start starter on the shelf, it, it doesn't have endo or ectomycorrhizae. So we had got a video from a customer that had purchased a, a bag of seed start. They were one of these people that is living on a boat. They had decided to, you know, size down, take their kids on this, you know, trip. She had stored all of her seed packets in her bag of our organic seed starter and sent us a video of her pulling out her seed packets and they had all sprouted. Um, <laughs> they, without water, without anything, they'd actually, all of her seed packets actually had roots coming out of them. Um, and again, you, if, if these people are starting seeds, and all these people like last year and this year, some of these people, it's the first time. It's their first taste of success. It's their, first time that they're going to feel like, oh my gosh, I, you know, I'm going to try this gardening thing. So let's give them, you know, th the best opportunity to, to start, you know, to start their seeds. So why not, you know, have a seed starter that has mycorrhizae in it, both endo and ecto, so they can start their regular green cuttings or the great green, their seeds or again, use it for cuttings for trees and shrubs and things like that. So um, just a little thing out there. And then what you're also gonna notice is that the price difference between what you probably already have or, or brand X is almost negligible. So you're getting this high quality seed start with mycorrhizae in it with really not a big price jump from probably, you know, you know, other brands. So again, take a look at this and just, uh, you know, see how it fits in with, with what you have in your store. So it's a great product. So we're going to jump right in um, to Biotone, uh, Biotone Starter Plus. So the way Espoma looks at fertilizers in general is it's, it's a two-step process. So the first step is planting. So you're putting your plant in your home, the whole again, success. You know, what are we selling people? We want to sell them a success. We want to sell them a healthy plant that they can then grow and survive and either bear fruit or shade or, or make things beautiful. So that's really what we're doing here. So Biotone Starter Plus is our first step um, as Espoma looks at it. So this product is pretty awesome. So we call it like the triple whammy of products. So what this does is a 433 fertilizer. It then has endo and ecto mycorrhizae in it at 9 million CFUs per gram. 
so again, you know, you're covering trees, shrubs, you know, all your woody, and then you're also covering all your green vegetables, um, herbaceous plants. And then on top of it, we're doing a beneficial bacteria package as well. And some people ask, so why do we split it up like that? Why do we look at it as a two-step pro you know, process? So number one, you know, planting happens the, the one time, obviously, and, but fertilizing happens multiple times. Mycorrhizae only survives in the soil not on top of the soil. So it dies and degrades in sunlight. So really what you wanna do is make sure that that product is by the roots. So that's what this does. You know, we, right here, it's a starter product. You put it by the roots. So why put mycorrhizae endo ecto in a fertilizer that is a maintenance product that really the mycorrhizae is never going to do anything for anyone. It's going to die. And it really just is adding cost to that product. So this is the first step. This is where we go. Uh, we've had a lot of people that have had them, the Espoma line in their stores for, for a long time. And then over the last couple of years, I've just said, hey, I've never really had the Biotone. I've had so many customers ask, and I think it's a cult. Um, <laughs> And honestly, it kind of is. It's very cultish. Uh, it's got kind of a cult following. Um, but it's our number one selling bin um, company-wide. So when you think about that as a product that's just only come out, I believe, about 10, 12 years ago, it, it's surpassed every other bin in our company. Um, and we've been around for, you know, 92 years. So it, it's had a really steep climb to fame, um, as I'll say. So, so yeah, this is, this is a great product and, and people really love it. So let's go to um, our next slide. So what have we done? So this product um, has had some changes. So we've made some improvements because of what we've seen in the market and the needs and really mycorrhizae changes. Um, over time. So, so that the right there just tells you, you know, the differences in what you're looking at when you're looking at other people that are maybe using the same product to plant and also using it as a maintenance product. So again, this is just the endo and ecto varieties, the propagules that are in there. Um, the species changes. And again, we looked at it, we had way too much ecto and not enough endo. And endomycorrhiza is 90% of all of your plant species. So when we go in and we think about where we want to put our money, you know, where do we want to put the best bang for the buck? We needed to change the endo part of our fertilizer. So that's really what we did. So we went in and, and did that. And then again, change our ecto to a little bit less uh, and then made sure that those were the best species to cover what was, um, you know, the best species that would cover the most plants. So again, just kind of looking at, at what that is. And we made those changes in 2019 and they were a rolling change as we went. So. Um, now you're going to be seeing it on all the packaging that's all current that is in the um, Velcro bag. So, so my favorite part of the Biotone is getting uh, the cu customer feedback. So I get a lot of these unsolicited where people send me like, oh my gosh, this is what I, you know, I used Biotone and this is what it got me. Again, these were from the summer of 2019 uh, from a customer that had done some planting and went, oh, oh my gosh, these are out of Albany, Oregon. So, I mean, these are all lo local. Um, so, you, know, you can just kind of see um, what's happening here on some containers. So, again, 
get on planting in the ground, containers, raised beds, all of that. Um, the last one was I had walked up and was doing a presentation for, you know, just a little seminar thing. And the store ran up to me and said, we planted these like, you know, 30 days ago and we had to show you the difference. Um, and there really this picture just doesn't even give it justice. Um, the, the, the smaller one fed with miracle Grow, was really um, quite yellow uh, with no flowers, no buds, no nothing. And then conversely, when you looked at that, that the biotone uh, planter on the other side, it was just a night and day difference. So those of you that are selling this product that have the opportunity to do this, um, it, it's pretty crazy and, and it sells more product. So I would say people can see it with their own eyes, then they'll believe it. So, you know, you can sell them a bag and make promises and say, this is the greatest stuff. And it is. But again, you know, any opportunity you have to give examples of, of what you're doing or, um, again, take it home, um, try it yourself. So, all right. So I kind of talked about how we approached it, like I said, it's a true step. So what this looks like as, as a Spoma looks at it. So our tone line is we look at it as, as there's there's a tone for every need. Um, our packaging is easy to understand. It's recommended to feed established pl plants again as the second step, uh, enhanced with biotone, which is our proprietary blend of selected soil microbes. Um, this has six million species uh, that go into each bag, and then um, a complex blend of natural organic. So we have. Uh, primary ingredients and then a secondary ingredients. Proof of organic gardening with their CDFA approval. Uh, improved soil structure, long lasting, slow, re slow, re slow release. Um, and of course, it, it won't safe or burn or leach away. So these are all the things you get when you're using an, an organic fertilizer. So looking at the tone, um, I would say if your microphones weren't uh, muted, I would ask you what the four on the top all had in common, but I'll tell you, they're all the same thing. Um, we don't try to hide it. Espoma, interestingly enough, uh, our second product was holly tone. Our first product was actually plant tone. So in the 1940s, uh, the holly tone association had come to us and asked us to make an acid fertilizer. And that's how holly tone came about. So over the years, um, starting with Azalea Tone um, in, I believe, 2016, so Holly Tone was a standalone acid fertilizer. Um, we're in some places, and even Carrie could tell you, we're actually known as the Holly Tone Company. Be people don't even know our name. They just call us the Holly Tone Company. But they really saw you know, as we started to grow and spread our rings and geographically spread across the United States, Holly, Holly Tone just didn't have an appeal. Um, you know, I remember the first time when I started talking to my boss and we were out on a sales co call and I was talking to people about Azalea Tone and, uh, and I had said, oh, you know, all of us just kind of we don't feed our holly, you know, most of us hope they just go out on their own. <laughs> so uh, Azalea Tone was our first foray into really marketing by geographical area. So taking a, a, an acid fertilizer and then just tweaking it so it fit our geography. So we're, we're used to it, you know, we're used to an ACR food, you know, everybody, everything out here has always said azalea camellia rhodi, you know, it, you know, that's, that's what sells. So when people would look at holly tone, they had no idea what to do with it. So again, that was the reason behind azalea tone. So then two years ago, we went and put out berry tone. The reasoning behind Berry Tone was pretty simple. We, we had customers that came to us and asked for it. And really that's how most of all the tones have come about. Um, 
little by little, it's been independent garden centers across the United States that have come to us and said, hey, can you come up with a tomato tone? Can you come up with a rose tone? And then we go to rose societies and leading ag schools across the nation and come up with those blends. So those four products, not to be confused, are all exactly the same. So they are a 434, um, they are 434 acid food with elemental sulfur, the same exact uh, bacteria blend in them. And then after Berrytown, we had a garden center out of the Midwest that kind of, I think, felt, felt a little bit uh, left out. Uh, they had been asking for evergreen tone for years. And some of you might be familiar with um, Petites, um, but they had really wanted this product. So again, these are products that have come across because of um, independent garden centers. And some of you, I come to each year and say, hey, listen, we're looking for new products. And I definitely love that input, put customer feedback from your end. I take that straight to SPOMA. And then again, that's how these products have all evolved over time. So um, Evergreen Tone, as you can see, is actually our new product this year. Um, it just appeals to more people that wanna come in. So to touch again on our easy to read packaging, that's what Espoma products do for most people. They can look straight at the package and know exactly what the product is. We don't do a huge numbers on the front, a lot of extra information, you know, that's all on the side of the package and you'll find it there very, you know, easy to find. But again, when people walk in, they, you know, I wanna feed my roses, I wanna feed my tomatoes. Um, let's just give them a big picture. <laughs> And, and put that on there and just allow them to shop for themselves. Are you going to get questions? Absolutely. Again, bilingual packaging, it's all there for, the, for your customer. But let's try to make it as easy as possible for them to find the right product for what they have. Um, one of the stories when we first brought in uh, Berry Tone, and I was in a garden center here in Oregon, and he said, the first time I saw somebody walk out with a bag of azalea tone and a bag of holly tone, he said, I was felt so bad, you know, he said, but, you know, I had to tell him, hey, you know, if you're using this, you know, these two products, they are similar, let's give you a bigger bag, you know, let's give you an 18 pound bag of azalea tone instead, and it'll do the same thing, but um, you know, what they had done, you know, so smartly is, is that they had a whole table of blueberries and raspberries and all their, um, all their berries and built a big display uh, of berry town right next to it. So, you know, that customer then had grabbed their blueberry and then their berry tone at the same time. Uh, they were just you know, to them that holly tone or zillia tone being on a berry table just didn't feel right. Uh, so again, th that's just another thing. It's marketing. It has to do with, um, you know, going to that consumer and just resonating something through the packaging and the picture. So. Um, so I wanted to just throw this slide in because this is the biggest question I get when I really start going through the tones and people say, listen, do I need to carry tomato tone? Do I need to carry garden tone? But carry them both. Well, this is really the difference, you know, when you're looking at tomato tone and garden tone and why we came up with tomato tone. We came up with tomato tone because tomato people are crazy. Uh, let's be real. I'm sure you guys have already got phone calls about whether you have tomatoes in your store or not, because there is some weird, contest that goes on that we just don't know about through all their neighbors about who can have the first, the biggest, the best, the tastiest, whatever it is. So that's how Tomato Town uh, came about. So we tweaked the formula just a little bit. Um, we put 8% calcium in that product instead of the five that goes into the garden town. And there's people that carry both 
There's people that carry one and not the other. Uh, really, it comes down to personal preference, but I believe that they both have a place on your shelf. Uh, so when you're looking at those two bags, just kind of know that, uh, you know, th that those are, those are the differences. We, we, you know, yes, there's a little tomato on the garden tone bag, but that tomato was not big enough. So uh, we made it bigger <laughs> and put it on its own package. And that's kind of, uh, you know, tomato tone and garden tone in a, in a, in a so here, all right. So again, we started doing this in 19 and then full on last year, but I didn't get to see a lot of you guys last year. <laughs> so um, just so you can kind of start looking and telling when you have packages coming in, um, we removed the slide closure. We, we went to a resealable Velcro and uh, so a hook and loop in um, all the packaging. We tested it out for a year before we went full on gangbusters. So that's, uh, you know, been used in the food industry and bird seed and everything. And it's been going swimmingly. Kind of talked a little about the USDA certified bio-based bag, but again, that, that's in there. We put all of our badges on the bag now. So um, previously our registrations were on the bag as far as the CDFA. Um, so that's on there. The bio-based bag um, seals on there. And then we also have a solar power um, bag. And, that, and that's just us just saying, hey, listen, we're, we're doing this and, and we feel good about it and you should do. <laughs> so, um, you know, again, upgrades in bacteria species and amounts of bacteria CFU. All of our tones went from 3% to 5% calcium. And that was every tone. So tone wide, we did that. So um, improvements were just making little by little. Um, and really we felt like we needed to improve our products with what's going on. So calcium is important. Um, it, it's what helps with the structure of your plant. It, same, it works the same as we do. You know, it builds us strong bones, help build strong structure in your plant. So these are just little tweaks and things that we've done to improve the packaging, or excuse me, improve the product and packaging, you know, for uh, all of our, all of our products. So, darn it. All right. The other thing on here is I put, this is like, it's easy to cross merchandise our products. So these are just little these are pictures that I've just taken over time at different garden centers throughout the Pacific Northwest that are carrying our products. And the thing I love about a Spoma in general is, well, it's pretty. <laughs> the bags are pretty, it built, you build great displays, but just, well, this is what you, you can do. And I think a lot of people have really caught on about cross merchandising and make it easier to sell product. But these are just, ideas, pictures, again, just to kind of like get the wheels a turning, you know, it doesn't have to be these giant things. It doesn't have to be a ton of room. Um, but these are the things that just tickle those little sensors in people's brain that like, hey, I'm standing next to the roses. This is a great spot, you know, uh, oh, there's rose food right next to the roses, or there's citrus food right next to the citrus. So these are just, again, those things that just get people to think about purchasing that extra item or, or really when you're thinking about it is it's like it's getting them what they need when they need it. So giving them all the tools to have product when they, you know, when they're ready to go out the door. Um, so just kind of a silent seller thing. It can be as small as, you know, you see the little tomato bicycle here and that, that was uh, from Sky Nursery. Uh, but again, just those little things that just remind people to make sure that they get what they need um, when they're purchasing their products. So, all right. So a few new products for us um, as far as um, for 2021, uh, the Evergreen Tone, kind of already talked about that again, it's the same acid food as a Holly Tone. We are only producing this in eight pound bags and 18 pound bags. Reason being is, you know, most people, that's what they're going to need. They're going to need larger tight bags when feeding um, evergreens and furs. Uh, two new products in our indoor line. 
bonsai mix, and then a horticultural uh, charcoal. So both four quart bags. Some of the registrations are kind of held up with what we're going through right now. So kind of have to just check um, to see what's going on through your distributor. But registrations, like everything else, has been slowed down with, with COVID. So um, Evergreen food, again, 18, eight pound uh, sizes, Holly Tone formula. And again, it's a geographical brand strategy. If you want to carry all four, Holly Tone, Berry Tone, Evergreen, and Azalea, good on you. Um, but again, you know, it, depending on where you are, um, if you're in Eastern Oregon, for instance, or Eastern Washington, um, you know, an evergreen might fit better for you as far as who you are um, selling to than a uh, holly tone or even a, you know, a zillia tone. So again, this is just giving you choices on, on where you are and maybe what you sell or promote a little bit more than, you know, other varieties. So our bonsai mix, we put in, um, it's just a blend of two ceramic materials. Uh, it's really just there to, you see my little pending organ registration there. So four quart bag, this was what we, by customer request, there was a hole in our line. We had enough people that were looking for uh, a bonsai mix and we decided to put it in to make sure that, you know, you had a complete line and a complete offering for your uh, customers. Uh, we put in a small bag of charcoal. Again, customer request, um, this is, a uh, Pretty straightforward, just small. Um, it does not meet the definition of biochar, but uh, you know all of those things in here will help you with what's going on right now. Whether it's orchids or terrariums, uh, all those things. If you have customers that just want to add a little bit of charcoal into their their mix, so wanted to take a little time to talk about bigger bags. Um, Four pound bags are great, everyone, but as you will, uh, you maybe already know, or you will find out is that four pounds of organic fertilizer um, feeding every three to four weeks doesn't go very far. So just know that, you know, I would say nine times out of 10, when I am out speaking with a customer in a store, in an aisle, you know, at an event, um, you know, I'm talking to them about a larger size bag. I, I look at this as a service, um, you know, when, especially with right now, you know, a lot of people are limiting either the time that they're going out or the, the amount of times, you know, that they're going out. So again, you know, without having people wanting to make a, a bunch of different trips to a store, this is kind of the option um, or giving them the options like, listen, you know, organic fertilizer, you're gonna need to feed every three to four weeks an 18 pound bag, a 36 pound bag is probably going to be better. But let's remember the hows. you know, how many plants do you have? How much area do you have? Um, the hows, um, I think really got, get forgotten. Um, so those questions will almost always lead, lead you and your customer into a bigger size bag. So, um, a lot of people don't know this. We also do some commercial sizes. Uh, so 50 pound bag sizes. So a lot more, this is probably the biggest growth area in the last few years, just because of more municipalities, schools, parks, things like that, that, are, that have come to our garden centers and say, hey, I need an organic fertilizer. You know, I need something to take care of. We're close to a waterway. Um, it, where you, you know their their city is dictating that they use um, organic without sludges and fillers. Where you know something that's made with that, you know they have to steer away from. So this just gives you guys maybe just a little bit more of an opportunity to to take a look at that. So um, lastly, I think I just wanted to touch on this a little bit, and I want to make sure I leave enough time for for questions. But with social media and marketing, uh, and crazy, I'm sure you guys are all seeing it as well, is what's going on uh, be, with COVID. But 
where people are spending more time. They're spending more time um, with social media. They're sending, they're asking more questions. They're, they're getting more ideas. They're, they're expecting information, education, all those things through uh, social media. So this is just a little blip of what we're seeing. And these numbers, I believe, were just through the end of June ish for us. I don't even have that the, the end of year stuff. But you know, th this is what we're seeing through our three leading uh, personalities that we use in social media. So so this is you know, on you know, like, um, I know Garden Answer just passed a million YouTube um, here, I believe Epic Gardening passed a million. So you're just seeing more and more people using social media platforms to get their information. So what we're seeing, um, so the SPOMA online, um, we have over 3.3 million site page views annually. Um, that's double digit annual growth. Um, what we do is 400 different blog posts. So when they get on there, you know, there's content for consumers, but there's content for everyone else that's there to use. Um, 150 YouTubes, garden answer videos, um, and the rest of them. But we're also using, utilizing some national print um, regional radio, uh, our, we, we do sponsored ads via Facebook and Instagram. Here in the Pacific Northwest, we're also going into our third year with Garden Time, which I love. Last year, we just did reruns, but um, hopefully this year, you know, we're going to be able to do some new content for, for you guys uh, now that we kind of know what we're looking at. So, Again, you know, these are just all the things that we're, we're using to market Espoma, but again, support the consumer. Uh, so then that way they can go in there and do research and get their own information. So it's been a crazy year. And like I said, I'm sure you guys, um, I follow a ton of you guys on Instagram, uh, you know, and see all your great posts. So I know that you guys are seeing this, uh, this, as well. So um, our brand partners, um, as you know, we've been using Laura for quite a few years. Um, she, her parents uh, were Spoma fans, had it in the store, and that kind of uh, came about naturally, which has been fantastic for us. But um, we do employ some other uh, personalities and brand partners that are out there. So I don't know if you follow them, but again, these are the people that we have to get the spam word out. So that's how we really feel the best way to use um, our dollars uh, in supporting them. And then they then can spread the word about a spoma, you know, and use it. Uh, we make sure that they use it and they love it uh, because that's how people you know, I always say, you know, I'm going to use the product, I'm going to try the product, and, and I'm going to make sure that I love it. Uh, you know, there's, there's some products that I'm like, you know, hey, you know, I, I like it, but I probably wouldn't suggest it. Um, and that's just in general. So we want to do the same with these guys, you know, get product in their hands, make sure that they use it. But, but make sure it's, it comes across as general, and, or excuse me, genuine, and make sure that that, that that's something that they um, believe in. So nobody wants to get sold to. Um, and that's what our belief is. We really want to get people that have already have a foundation in the lawn and garden industry. And then, then that get, lends itself to its own credibility. So um, we have a new dealer site. So this is just part of what we do and make sure that we are giving our dealers all the resources that they need, whether it be, again, um, you know, ad templates, fact sheets, blogs, uh, articles. Um, you can get on here and really get whatever you, you need um, when it comes to the SPOMA line of products. Um, if you need POP, 
you need marketing materials. Um, again, this just gives you access to all of those items. And then lastly, um, we have something called a certified Espoma dealer program. So I've gotten quite a few uh, <laughs> within the last year, you know, how do I do this? Uh, what's it all about? So what we do is we have a program where anyone on your staff can go in, take, um, take a test. It's, it's staff training um, without having to either have me in your store and get everybody together, which I do love and, you know, offer, you know, in nor under normal circumstances. But, you know, this is gives your staff an opportunity to just jump on at any time. It takes about 25, 30 minutes to get through all the little videos. And then at that point, once you have a staff member in your uh, store, it gives you the little Espoma badge. So anytime when a customer is putting in their zip code on our um, where to find a dealer, uh, you know, your little um, badge is going to pop, pop up. Um, and just give you this little extra street cred, uh, <laughs> some of street cred. So that just, that's how you really do it. It's that easy. And then, the, you know, we send your employee in a diploma. We send them, you know, whatever we happen to have at the time. It could be a bumper sticker or a Klingon or a hat or things like that. Um, so again, it's just our way of giving every store 24 seven access to training and um, giving you the ability to, you know, learn more about Espoma and really get studied up and make sure your staff are out there and knowledgeable. So, so that's my last slide. And legit, this is a store on the East Coast that asked us to send them bags so they could dress up as Espoma tones for Halloween. <laughs> So um, they sent us this photo and I thought it was the best. So we are um, not all crazy, but you know, some of us are, but it's just, it was the cutest. So I kind of had to, to slide it in here. So anyway, um, that's all I have for you guys. Um, I am more than happy to answer any questions that any of you might have, but I do appreciate your time. Um, I really wanted to, you know, cover just little bits and pieces about what's going on, but also make sure you kind of had an overview of, you know, who we are as a company, but, you know, why we do things um, and, and how we do it. So again, thank you. Oh. Thank you, Carla. That was great information. Uh, we just have a few questions in chat. Um, the one question is, do you have any information on Bonsai Mix when it's going to be released in Oregon? Um, you know, I, I don't. Our registration still has not uh, come through because of COVID. You know, everything is just, I, I hate saying that anymore <laughs> because it seems like that's the answer to everything uh, anymore, but it really has been held up. We just got the Washington one through, I want to say about weeks ago um we filed them all at the same time but yeah whoever that is i will check on that and see if i can get any update but they kind of just move on their own pace yeah. so. okay and then the last question is do, do the large bags come resealable they, they don't they are a handle bag so as you can kind of tell on on the picture here they're just they have a handle on them um, they're, they're 18 pounds so there's no way to, to have them reseal and stay sealed, especially if they get stuck or things like that. So um, just the small bag, uh, four and eight pound come resealable, and then all the soils, um, four and eight quart are resealable as well. Okay. All right. So uh, any more questions? Either you can put them in the chat, or if you'd like to unmute yourself, you can ask Carla, Carla yourself. Well, I don't see any more questions, Carla. I think, <laughs> right. you did, I think you covered a lot of great information. So, oh, um, 
wonderful. <laughs> so we like Definitely. to thank you again for doing it. And again, this will be um, uploaded onto YouTube in the next few days. So you can share with your other staff and, uh, and, and any new employees you may hire in the springtime. And I know Carla's available anytime. So thank you again and everyone have a great day. <laughs>